King Nebuchadnezzar ate grass like an ox for seven good years after growing proud and overconfident. Our teaching today is under the topic rebirth. Rebirth. In Daniel chapter 4, verse 27, and in some Bibles, verse 30, Nebuchadnezzar said these words, Babylon the great, was it not I, with my great strength, who build it as a royal resident for my splendor and majesty. Nebuchadnezzar forgot that he was able to accomplish all this by the grace of God. So he became proud, chest thumping, feeling that he can succeed by himself. He can do without God. And for that reason, in Daniel 4.30, in some Bibles, verse 33, Nebuchadnezzar was cast out from among men. He ate grass like an ox, and his body was bathed with dew of heaven until his hair grew like the feathers of an eagle and his nails like the clothes of a bird. The guy grew hair, nails like an animal. He became like a wild animal, eating grass with the animals. For seven good years, seven wilderness years experience, until King Nebuchadnezzar got back to his senses to know that there is a God in heaven. There is a one who's in charge. There's a creator who is uncreated. In Daniel 4.34, in some Bibles, verse 37, Nebuchadnezzar says, Now praise and exalt and glorify the King of heaven. Change of attitude change of mind, change of focus. Now praise and exalt and glorify the King of heaven because all his works are right and his ways are just. And those who walk in pride, he is able to humble. Truly a rebirth of some sort, a turnaround in every imaginable aspect. Now free to serve, but from a, totally, from a totally different viewpoint, humble, anew, now with God in control, giving God his place of honor, knowing that without God is nothing. He discovered Nebuchadnezzar that without God, we are completely nothing. Even your breath and my breath, my listener and viewer, it takes God. If it takes away your breath, you are done. You can't wake up to go to your working place. Wisdom chapter 9 verse 6 says, any person, however accomplished as he or she may be, without the wisdom that comes from God, he or she shall come for nothing. We become completely nothing. This is what happened with Nebuchadnezzar. He became a nobody, eating with the animals. But after getting back to his senses, realizing that there's a God, after his some sort of rebirth, made anew, after the seven tough years, with the animals. He got back to his senses, became a good king in that aspect. Saul to Paul is another rebirth experience. The great Saint Paul, previously Saul, was an ardent student of Gamaliel. Gamaliel was well known in understanding the laws of God. In Acts 22 4, Saul tells us before his rebirth, I persecuted the followers of Christ to their death, arresting both men and women and throwing them into prison. That was Saul, persecuting the church of Christ until his three days, blind and hungry wilderness experience. 
he was put down by Christ, whom he was persecuting, the Damascus wilderness experience. And in Acts 9.9, 9, the Bible says, For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. Three good, three good days in the wilderness. Can you imagine blind? You can't see. You're not eating. It's an experience and a half that gave birth to Paul from the previously murderer Saul. The killer was transformed, given birth to Paul. God freed him both from physical blindness and spiritual blindness. He got baptized, had a meal, and immediately headed, as Acts 9.20 tells us, he immediately headed straight to the synagogue and began to pray that Jesus was the Son of God. A complete turnaround, a rebirth of astounding magnitude. Nicodemus could not understand this rebirth story, being born again. It was a strange word for him. In John 3, 1-6, the Bible tells us there was a Jewish leader named Nicodemus who belonged to the party of the Pharisees. One night he went to Jesus and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher sent by God. No one could perform the miracles you are doing unless God were with him. Jesus answered, I am telling you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God without being born again. How can a grown man be born again? Nicodemus asked. He certainly cannot enter his mother's womb and be born a second time. I am telling you the truth, replied Jesus. No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. A person is born physically of human parents, but is born spiritually of the spirits. True rebirth is of the Holy Spirit of God. Letting go the world and worldliness, letting go evil and embracing and letting God reign in our lives. That's a rebirth. And this is the reason why Christ came into the world. This is the reason why he left heaven to come and die for you and for me so we can experience a rebirth. A rebirth in the true sense of it. Not becoming a Christian who's still living the old life. No. Transformation. Like it was from Saul to Paul. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15 to 17. We are reminded that Christ died for all. Everybody. He died for everybody. So that those who live those who are born again, those who are baptized, those who experience this spiritual rebirth might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose for them. Verse 16 says, no longer then do we judge anybody, anybody by human standard. Our standard if you are born again, if you've experienced Christ, is not the ordinary human standard. It's at another level because you have the Holy Spirit to help you and to guide you. Verse 17 says, anyone who's joined to Christ is a new being. The old is gone, the new has come. The old is gone, the new has come. A new creature, a rebirth, born of the Spirit of God. I recall my 17 years of suffering, partial paralysis, two surgeries, losing memory, could not walk, could not sit, could not stand, could not even communicate one English sentence, suffered, real suffering, excruciating suffering, baptism by fire, through suffering. 17 wilderness years experience, excruciating pain and suffering, and experience a rebirth by meeting Christ anew, Steve Wayesu. And I did experience Wisdom 96 firsthand. Any person, however accomplished as they may be, Without the wisdom of God, they'll count for nothing. With my two degrees in economics, the second best student in Africa, it turned out to be nothing. I lost my job. I lost all the money. I lost my memory. I could not walk. I became useless. Nebuchadnezzar ate grass for seven years. I suffered for 17 years. And after that, 17 years again out of employment. Of course, overlapping the 17 years of suffering. The authorship I took up, I took it lightly. I never took it so seriously. I never took it as a career. But I served God with all my heart. 
and I will continue serving him. Now as a new creature. When I check my CV, after I said I'm taking a 40-day time with the Lord, I was amazed to realize that I actually left the corporate world. I resigned from a flourishing job because of the spinal injury in November of 2003. So last year, 2020, November 2020, was actually 17 years since I left employment, since I left the corporate world. And I started serving God. So for me, 17 years of suffering, overlapping 17 years of out of employment, the corporate world, to me it's a new dawn. It's a new era. In my 40 days of retreating with the Lord, time to pray and listen. And I still continue giving the, the daily scriptures and the daily reflections at least once a week. In the once a week topics, I remember giving three topical issues. And one of them was who bewitched our politicians, our leaders, and us, the citizens. Indeed, the world looks like it's bewitched. No wonder we need a rebirth. We need to be renewed in Christ yet again. After listening to God and indeed getting some directions, I intend to continue by the grace of God, ministering to his people, serving in his vineyard, at the same time now taking authorship as a career. No longer just lightly. No longer just, uh, by the way, I will take it now as a career. And I will not only write spiritual books, I'll now also get into motivational books. I used to give motivational talks before. I want to get back into that. Writing motivational books, spiritual books, and also up my motivational speaking to a serious career level by the grace of God. Now reborn in Christ and with Christ. Everything for him. A rebirth. In my motivational speaking, it will be tailor-made, purpose-driven, client-fit inspirational talks, and corporate training embedded on the virtues of truth and integrity. The virtues of truth and integrity. Those virtues I'm not going to leave behind. Virtues that are being lost in the world today. And it's all going to be designed to inspire and bring out the best in us. To inspire and bring out the best in us to reassure and revitalize, to overcome every challenge, to reassure you, revitalize my audience, to overcome every challenge, including COVID, you name it, whatever challenge you're going through, the motivational speaking is going to be geared towards that, but now as a career, to nurture formidable, optimally operating teams in companies, corporates, multinational, to stimulate commitment and not merely involvement. Bring it out. Bring the best out of people to instill the belief, the honesty and hard work pays. A belief that is going out of the window. People are believing in shortcuts which are never short. They are dangerous and they are not fulfilling. And at the end of, ta at the, end of the day, you may lose the most important thing which is eternal life. And also to help people overcome excuses and complaints to get their tasks done. We need to overcome excuses. For indeed, when you're excusing yourself, you are accusing yourself. For business people, we need to remember that human capital is key in achieving our goals and desires. Especially in difficult times, in challenging times like the times that we are in right now. I am already working on my profile, brochures, and many other things to soon relaunch the motivation of speaking, taking it to another level by the grace of God. If you know a small group, a large group, corporate and even multinationals who need this kind of motivation, by the grace of God, I am up to the task now as a career. Steve re-entering the field now with Jesus, rebirth, the new Steve Mbugua Zoidi. I will engage schools, colleges, universities, families, corporates, and all who need inspiration, inspired talks, and corporate training in the same line. Even our own youth who need to be inspired to inspire others, I'll work out packages for youth also. So stay tuned to this channel for continued evangelization and now the motivation of speaking. Subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe button to be getting updates, spiritual nourishment, and more. Today, as I pray for this new venture, for the new dispensation, the new dawn, I'm also praying for a new dawn for you. 
let's all be inspired for the greater things, for greater things in Christ Jesus. And as we pray, I want to end with Psalms, chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. The Lord said these words, powerful words that I should claim. I always claim them as my own. Even as I enter the new venture, these are the words that I'm claiming. For the reborn, the, 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 the ones who've experienced this grace of God, this is what should be claiming. This should be for you. It says, happy are those who reject the advice of evil people, who do not follow the example of sinners, or join those who have no use for God. They do not join those who have no use for God. Instead, they find joy in obeying the law of the Lord. Hard work and honesty pays. And they study day by night the law of the Lord. They are like trees that grow beside a stream. That bear fruit at the right time. And whose leaves do not dry. They succeed in everything they do. They succeed in everything they do. This is the mentality. This is the focus that I'm entering into the new venture. Trusting that if God is with me, for sure, success is assured. If we remain in Christ, we'll be like the trees planted by the riverside. We'll be in the vine who is Jesus, tapping from the vine. All the graces, all the blessings, and we will succeed in what we are doing, no matter the conditions. These tough times of COVID, people need inspiration. People need to believe in themselves through God. Believing that God can help them to succeed whatever they, they, they are doing. It doesn't matter the, the season. With God on your side, tapping from the stream, from the vine, you will make it. Let's trust God for this. Let's live in him and for him. He'll fight our battles. He'll make us victorious here until we make it to the greatest victory. Entering the kingdom of God. To live in his delightful presence forever and ever. Heavenly Lord and King, I want to thank you for this amazing day. Thank you for rebirth, your word of today for us. We need to be truly born again, not by words, but leaving our baptismal vows. The world has become dark, darkened by the God of this world. As you tell us in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, that the God of this world has darkened our minds. May you enlighten our minds anew. May you give us a fresh birth by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in you and for you and to succeed in everything we do in you and for you, health-wise, financially, and in every aspect until we come to the heavenly abound to live in your delightful presence forever and ever. In Jesus' name I pray, trust and believe. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I wish you a wonderful day with the Lord Jesus Christ. Stay tuned to this channel. Subscribe. A lot more is coming for the greater glory of the kingdom of God. I love you. Jesus loves you more. Relax, for God is in control, no matter the circumstance. God bless you. Bye-bye.